Welcome to Eat Your Backyard. I'm so happy you decided to take a look at this video. I have a YouTube channel where I've been telling you about my backyard for many years. And if you're new to the channel, I hope you will subscribe. And if you like this video, I hope you will give it a thumbs up. In this video, we're going to talk all about banana time. Now, I live in Zone 10A in Florida, which is a great place to grow bananas. Really, the only thing that isn't provided in adequate quantities is the water aspect of bananas. You will have to be sure you water them. That's the one takeaway I'll give you right up front as we get into this video. Now, we're looking down at my beautiful backyard, which I pleased to say continues to multiply in abundance due to some simple things I've in place recently. I'll tell you about those all the time in my Sunday coffee chat live streams, also in the content I release like this video. Please forward this on to any friends you have who might be interested in this topic. I'd like to have as much helpful impact as possible on the gardening community of Florida. Get the word out. You can grow your own food. You can grow nutritious food. It's really very easy. Just really have to get out of the way. So let's get right into it. bought a house it had a backyard some boring grass and lizards running wild i started making plans and digging lots of holes but then i turned on the tv and that's about the time that your backyard began we zoned it out of a green garbage can i went ahead and planted mango trees bananas even fishing me now i share my whole life with you funny chickens too my forest grew and grew If you like music, well, I make music also. Go to Jedi Jingle Maker. It's my new YouTube channel. Subscribe there as well. Check out all the new tunes that I'm putting out. Today, I want to tell you about something which I love, and that is bananas. Now, if you don't live in a warm climate, bananas for you are going to be indoors. But here in Zone 10A, we can grow them right in the ground, and it almost never freezes. So to not take advantage of that, it to me, is a big miscalculation. So I've really taken advantage of it. Now I had banana groves on one side of my yard. I had to relocate that completely to the other side of my yard. Actually, a better side of the yard, the southern end, where it'll get a lot more sun. One thing bananas love are really full sunlight conditions all the time. So that's what we now give them. I had them in a northern area of my yard that was a little bit shaded. I transplanted a lot of them to this corner of the yard, which is my southeast corner of the yard. And I'm going to show you a couple of varieties that I have. Well, actually more than a couple. They're actually a variety or two. I don't know what they are because I've just gotten cuttings from friends of, thing, of bananas that tasted good. And that's a great way to get bananas is by the pup. I've got lots of videos on the channel about how to grow bananas from pups. So go check those out if you're interested. All right, let's get right into it and check out the garden. Okay, so this grove I put in roughly eight months ago and it's been doing quite well. This is a rather dry area of the yard, believe it or not, back in this region. A little bit more wet here because we have a sprinkler there, but it's rather arid and dry. There's really no irrigation back in the corner there. So the water that I've given them has been largely from a hose and then relying on, on the rain conditions. So that's been something that I've been very keen to keep my eye on because you don't want your bananas to not get enough water. Once they get deep roots, they can be somewhat drought tolerant, believe it or not for short periods, but if you want them to produce quality fruit in the long run, you want to give them a consistent flow of, of water. But to me, two first things to focus on, sunlight and plenty of water. Now, after that, we're talking about fertilizers. We'll get into that a little bit later in the video, but let's look at this cool variety. This is the Dwarf Cavendish Banana. Very common, you can get them everywhere from Lowe's to Walmart to your local nursery if you're in Florida. Dwarf Cavendish is an incredibly common variety. They typically grow to be about, I'd say six to eight feet tall max, the top of the leaves, a very small banana tree. And that's very appealing for small yards, of course, because of the space limitations that are inherent. However, even though they are a small size, they produce really at a high rate. So if you take care of them and give them what they need, they'll produce. Aww. I planted about, I don't know, $80 worth of Bananas that I got at this local chain yeah! store. 
right along here and I've been doing chop and drop along the bottom. You can see there's a lot of plant matter. Everything that I cut, I redistribute into the yard. I do a lot of yeah. chop and drop right here. Also, I put in about probably, well, I don't know exactly how much, but probably clo close to 10 gallons of bunny manure back in this whole area. So I just am constantly throwing it back in there and giving it nutrients. And then I also use one other thing uh, I've used on these quite a bit, which is the micronutrients. So those, you know, uh, not the big three, but all the others that you can get in something like a dynamite sprinkle on, they call dynamite brand sprinkle on, you know, uh, micronutrients. That's good for vegetables and for fruits. It really fills in the gaps. Uh, you're gonna get a lot of that from your compost if you're putting compost back in. That, that, so in addition to the regular macronutrients that you give them in, say, a granular fertilizer, or in my case, bunny manure, you also want to infuse them with some micronutrients. That really will round off the edges in a lot of problem spots for your fruit trees. I've done that here as well. Just two applications over the last eight months of just a light sprinkling of some micronutrient granular fertilizer. And as you can see, they're doing quite well. This is a hot day. They're getting the full sun back here, and they're, lo they're loving it. Recently, I've had to cut back this long in tree to allow the sun to get to all parts of these bananas. That's important. You know, the trees always want to grow over each other. And I do a lot of shade management in this yard because I think that's incredibly important. If you want a plant to do well, you got to let it get some sun. And when you're trying to pack trees in into a small space, you know, everybody's got to share the available sunlight. So I do a lot of fitting in the canopy and it's worked out great. All right, let's look at another variety that is much bigger. Now this sucker you can see is much, much bigger. And this is actually the third fruiting of this thing in about two years. It's now beginning to clump up. You can see these vigorous growth pups are starting to shoot up all around it. That's what you wanna see. That's because again, the same thing I talked about with the Cavendish bananas, lots of, lots of bunny manure, lots of micronutrients application, plenty of water, and then the nutrients return, which is something like composting in place, the chop and drop that I do. If you can see along the bottom here, there's all kinds of leaves and everything that I've chopped just laying there and decaying and then returning that back into the soil. Uh, it's right up against this strawberry tree, which, ah, oh, there we go, which has a strawberry right on it. I can't resist. Mm. That is delicious. Tastes just like cotton candy. You know, the, the Jamaican strawberry, just to get on a tangent for a second, it's a fantastic tree to have. It's a weeping tree. I've grown them from seed and from cutting. And, you know, depending on how you grow them, you get different style of tree, really. Much more vigorous when you grow it from a seed as opposed to growing it from a cutting where it has much more of a weeping example. I have two examples of that in my yard. However, nothing beats the rapid growth of a banana in your yard in terms, and the, also the production of a banana in terms of the fruiting. This is a Musa banana. The, the giant Musa banana. And as you can see, it's uh, you know probably topping 15 feet now, if not larger, and uh, might get a little bigger than that, but they get large. The circumference of the tree is large. Everything about it is large. And, but the bananas are not large. They're generally a smaller banana, but a high quantity, this uh, Musa banana. Musa is also another easy, there are lots of sub-varieties of Musa. I'm not gonna go into that, but it's a good solid variety for Florida. I found, if you get pups from local plants where you know that the bananas taste good and it's doing well in your local area, that's probably the best thing to do. I know what varieties do well in my area and uh, that's what I've selected, but the Musa, everybody has them around here. And for a simple reason, they are a powerhouse producer. Now we're gonna take a look at a couple more that are in an awkward spot over here to the left, which I got cuttings from friends and uh, I'll tell you about them. Okay, now these three, came from three separate clumps that I got from friends of mine. And I believe it's an apple banana here. I think this might be a Grand Nan. And I don't know what this one is, but you can see I violated the rule here. I planted them directly underneath the canopy of this strawberry tree, but still they're doing okay. It'll be a you know interesting thing to see how they do. If they're very large bananas, they'll just grow right up and out and they'll take the sun that's available straight over here. And that's kind of what I was hoping they do, get more of a weeping thing happening. And you know, this is part of the forest deal. You know, this is how forests grow. And uh, to me, to have one variety of plant in an area is very uh, boring. <laughs> I like to have the variety. I love the look of plants interacting with each other. And I think it creates a healthier situation in the soil too. 
The roots are doing a lot of interesting things with fungus, if you know anything about soil biology and bacteria. And uh, so there's a lot of, a lot of uh, complex interaction going on in the soil that we don't need to do anything for it to work well, other than provide it with food and water. That's really it, the food, water, sunlight scenario is, is the whole nine. But what an exciting thing to see. What will these guys produce over the years? Apple banana? I've never had one. I'm told they're good. Now, if you know of banana varieties that are excellent or grow well in your area, please leave it in the comments below. I love the interaction in the comments. Also, don't forget to give us a thumbs up on the video. And again, subscribe if you're not already. Okay, so now we've learned a thing or two about bananas. And I'm going to tell you the one last secret thing because you stayed until the end of the video. I'm going to tell you the secret that I learned about bananas most recently. Okay, so here I am on the northern end of my yard, and you can see there's a giant musa right behind me doing quite well. The reason that's doing well, and you see no bananas farther back in there, is because the chickens like to eat bananas. I had no idea the chickens like to eat bananas. Who would have thought banana peels are appealing to chickens? They are. They absolutely, I had transplanted about 10 giant cuttings that were all doing well, and the chickens systematically pecked to pieces the base of every one of them. And then I'd eventually just saw the, the trunk over and lay it on its side, and those chickens would go to town, and they'd just eat every bit of that banana tree until it was just fibers on the ground. So, you know, that didn't work out. This was my giant Musa banana grove that I was going to place here and have reborn in the chicken pen as this shady, wonderful thing. And now chickens like the taste of banana trees. So there's no banana trees thrown in the chicken coop. However, the small amount that were outside of the fencing that did well, because they were not near the chickens, I'm going to keep those. And I may actually back the chicken fence back a little bit and take a little of the chicken real estate. Because after all, what am I trying to do? Create a chicken paradise or a banana paradise? Well. A little of both, the yin and the yang. I want both. But it's time for the chickens to give a little, to get a little. By the way, we throw those bananas sometimes. We'll throw, you know, uh, bananas that are super ripe on it. We forgot about them. Oh, man, they're, we'll throw the whole hand, of, the whole thing of bananas back there, and those hens will eat up all the bananas. So there you go. You should get some back there chickens. Why not? They're cool. I love them. Sweet little pets. They poop food. All right. Thanks for watching. Eat your backyard. Don't forget. Plant more, plant more often. Thanks for watching. Aww.